I'm going to read about Richard Rohl because, yeah, yeah, I have to, I have to. <laughs> okay. I'll do the first reading over here. <laughs> uh, he's not in bed. He likes to get up. <laughs> uh, a reading Richard Rohl. The mystic flowering of 14th century England, because uh, he's billed as the father of English mysticism, which is quite significant. Uh, <laughs> mystic uh, flowering of 14th century England. Richard Roll, R-O-L-L-E, 1300 to 1349. Here we have Richard Rolls recognized as the father of English mystical tradition, a tradition that includes such contemplative writers as Walter Hilton and Julian of Norwich and the Cloud. Of the author of the Cloud of Unknowing, Roll entered into the contemplative life in a rather extraordinary manner. After studying at Oxford University for seven years and conducting his studies in a competent way, he decided at the age of 19 to leave, declaring his disappointment at the disputationness of the academic milieu. He exerted his independence and returned to his home in Yorkshire. Thereafter, making the announcement in Explaining his decision to his family, he ran away from home and became a hermit. <laughs> Making a hermit's habit out of two frocks, uh, hobbit. Two frocks his sisters had provided for him, together with his father's raincoat, he entered into the solitary life in a makeshift manner. His decision was accompanied by the manifestation of certain unusual psychic abilities, including an ability to speak and write in different sentences at the same time. Unusual. Throughout his hermit life, he traveled from place to place, wandered here and there, finding shelter where he could. He seems to have been in touch with a number of religious communities and for a while was spiritual advisor to a community of nuns at Hampool in South Yorkshire. His temperament was marked by a clear and definite and resolute aesthetic bent. The intrinsic austerity of which was mitigated by some apparent English common sense. He believed in fasting and took abstinence seriously, yet he could also relax the rules when he wanted to. Not attached by vows to any religious order or community, entirely independent as a hermit. He seems at times to be unclear about what was expected of him as a hermit. He was a distinctly free spirit. He sounds like Thoreau. <laughs> he depicted the presence of God within in terms of internal heat, warmth, or fire. That's why we talked about the fire of love. The same presence was experienced as love, the love that is depicted as silent fire. For example, on one occasion, Richard said, I could feel in my heart the warmth of eternal love. He referred to God as the beloved, and in expressing how it happens that the soul rises up in intense delight to her beloved, he wrote, The pure, the love of the lover, the closer is God's presence to him, pure his rejoicing. Rolly, Roll, Richard Roll was also fascinated in the in the uh, subject of angels, with the subject of angels, which he recognized not simply because they belong to a higher transcendental place, but also because their association with music. This is where it gets interesting because of his cosmic harmony. He referred on occasion to being caught up in the heights of contemplation and to the source of angels' praise. The angels contemplate divine things reflect the splendor of God and shine from the light from the face of God in experience. He attested on, he attests one sometimes experiences the divine music within. Such music is symbol of cosmic harmony. 
It illustrates that the several layers of four dimensions of the cosmos are integrated. Roll of wow that the internal singing is in the same key as the music of the spheres. Where we read uh, Richard Roll was talking about the music of the spheres. Quote, not quote, but in experience he attested one sometime experiences divine music within. Such music is a symbol of cosmic harmony. It illustrates that the several layers or dimensions of the cosmos are integrated. Roll of vow that the internal interior singing is in the same key as the music of the spheres. And from his writings, he says, the harmony of those, page 93, the harmony of those who praise divine charity have filled his mind, and rightly so, and thus it is with courage and not dread that he quits his exile here. At the end of all, he hears angelic song and rises up. He who has learned so loved so ardently, he is called up to that eternal hall and honored in the most splendid fashion to sit on eye with the seraphim. As far as my study of the scriptures go, I have found that to love Christ above all else will involve three things, warmth, song, and sweetness. And these three, as I know from personal experience, cannot exist along without there being great quiet. And these three things, which are the sign of love in its most perfect form, the utmost perfection of the Christian religion is undoubtedly found. I, by the grace of Jesus, and to the limit of my meager capacity, have accepted them, yet I dare not equate myself with the saints who display them because they understand such things somewhat more perfectly. However, let us press forward with all my strength so that my love becomes more fervent, my song more fluent, and my experience of love, sweetness, all the four, for my brothers. You are wrong if you suppose that people today cannot be as holy as the prophets and apostles were. I call it fervor when the mind is truly ablaze with eternal love and the heart similarly feels itself burning with a love that is not imaginary but real for a heart set on fire produces a feeling of fury love. I call it song when there is in the soul overflowing in art a sweet feeling of holy praise, heavenly praise. When thought turns into song, when the mind is enthralled to sweet disharmony. This twofold awareness is not achieved by doing nothing, but through the utmost devotion. And from these two there springs a third, for unspeakable sweetness is present too. Fervor and song bring marvelous delight to a soul, just as they themselves can be the product of very great sweetness. Uh, they mentioned uh, the music of the spheres. We were reading from the book Silent Fire, An Invitation to Western Mysticism, edited by Walter Hitt. Holden Caps and Wendy Wright. Hmm. It's a book about uh, Western mysticism. And this is the English, the founder of English mystical tradition. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's from Oxford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1300 to 1349, Richard Roll, who is uh, known for writing The Fire of Love. Uh, 